So what that uh, little experiment has just confirmed for me is if I fix this coil up here where the angular displacement is very small you can see that's ticking away there so there's very very little there um, so that's, that's that's getting interesting again and uh, yeah I can do something nice with my uh, my method of actually picking up uh, the pulse there I think I've been looking at uh, various bits of metal to act as uh, the armature for this uh, magnet to react against. So remember this is going to be fixed on the pendulum and uh, the magnet, uh, the electromagnet is going to draw it in. And uh, something like that would be useful. Um, I've got various uh, size, you know, these magnetic catches um, and I've thought of, uh, you know, drilling bits of mild steel etc um, but I've just turned this up and uh, that's uh, something out of a um, uh, an old uh, video recorder and that is just the right width for my pendulum so I'm going to cut that off and use that have uh, you ever seen anything as dinky as this okay uh, I've had this little box of screws for many many years and uh, I was hoping to use them on this but uh, I think they're just just too short anyway I'll keep them for uh, some more years I uh, drill out a pilot hole for uh, any screw that's going into the wood just to prevent it from splitting I'd set the depth gauge so that's uh, and just to make sure I don't drill all the way through. I've countersunk that uh, bit of metal so the uh, head of the screw is uh, out, of, uh, out of the surface area. So I've got my uh, little armature in place there and uh, my coil is going to mount on here but I need to space it out and I also want some means of uh, actually adjusting it and I've uh, found a little bit of uh, Tofnel uh, which I'm going to use the Tofnel's going to go on there and the coil's going to go on there and that lines up perfectly with the center of the magnet in line with the center of the uh, pendulum there you'll notice there is a, an extra hole in that uh, little device but it'll never be seen because the um, uh, the coil will always be right in front of it. There's only a, a few degrees of movement over a very shallow distance there. I hope this is clear, but on the back of the coil, there's a little uh, dimple there, and that's kind of in the way. So I've got the option of either just flattening it but I think what I might do is just put a little uh, rebate in the Tofnel to accept it. I've got to drill and tap this. Oh, and I shall drill that and uh, tap the Tofnel. And then I'll uh, say I'll have some way of uh, moving this backwards and forwards. That's uh, the little block to support the solenoid coil. What I've done is um, put this uh, little bench hook G clamped it to the uh, bed of the drill and then I've drilled successive holes because I haven't got a mill so holding this as a square um, I drilled successive holes in there well, I've moved it since I did it um, and uh, it just got them side by side and then cleaned it up with uh, a little needle file Again, it's not beautiful, but it's uh, perfectly adequate for what I'm setting out to do. So that's the little support. And just got to uh, do those up now. 
a bit uh, looks a bit uh, industrial weight but uh, <laughs> rather than clock but uh, that's uh, that's what I've got and uh, that's the, uh, the coil assembly I'm going to do something with these wires but that's uh, again is a detail Well, I guess you could say the pen is finally dropped uh, regarding lighting. I've uh, moved the clock over to the other side of the room so that um, the daylight is behind me. I should have done that before, but um, it's also cleared up the workspace on my workbench, which is good. OK, so I've got a little coil fitted there now and it's uh, little adjustments and uh, the, uh, the little keeper or the armature there and um, that's uh, all uh, looking okay so that's what I expected it to look like but uh, I've got a, an issue with this little uh, claw uh, what's happening is there is simply too much uh, slop in this uh, mechanism uh, sideways there yeah, so I've got to take that out uh, and I haven't done myself any favours by moving the uh, clock frame down so low because it's it's a good way away from the um, uh, the, the top uh, support for the pendulum but as uh, I say I wanted to do something different enough I've certainly got something different uh, so I say I may yeah I may regret that um, but I don't think I shall change it uh, I'll try and live with it for a bit but until I've actually got the backboard fixed to a wall you can see everything's a bit uh, a bit wobbly and I guess if you had a grandfather clock you'd have a problem if it wobbles around that's the uh, little pull I'm just taking that c-clip off and uh, out of my uh, camera collection stuff I've uh, got uh, a couple of little shims there little washers which uh, surely are gonna help me as long as I don't drop them that, uh, that seems to have got that little problem sorted out right now I'm going to turn my uh, attention to the um, uh, the hips toggle which is going to go down here somewhere this was the little switch uh, that I used on the uh, original uh, clock and um, uh, you can see it, it, it's out of a relay and I use this because they are gold flash contacts as in other words they're very low resistance and uh, very reliable um, not that it mattered just for the prototype and I just soldered that little pallet on the top uh, for the hips toggle to work on um, but uh, I, I could strip this off and use some of these contacts but I wanted to do uh, but I wanted to do something uh, different to that and uh, this is uh, some of my switch collection here what I was looking for was uh, a set of contacts uh, something like uh, these and um, and th that's typical of what you see in a, uh, a hips toddle clock um, but I've got things like this a bit aggressive um, or that and uh, I rather like that because that reminds me of uh, some of the early equipment that I worked on and um, uh, I just I just I might very well use that um, Burgess so uh, the electrical lads will know Burgess um, but I've also got some interesting things like these like uh, mercury switches now wouldn't it be nice to have that uh, um, rattling backwards and forwards when the um, when the hips works I think that would be that would be a bit exciting wouldn't it and I got another one there um, so mm, choices um, oh plenty of choices I love these things oh look at this one 
Um, this is uh, a little trembler. I'll get a close up of this because this is fabulous. This is uh, really quite an amazing thing. I, um, I don't know what it's out of, but um, you see the three different uh, uh, levels of movement with those. A little crack in this top file, which is a, a real shame. But look at this bottom one. When you talk about a trembler, look at it go. It really does. It, it's hard to hold it still. So I guess the, the three different uh, radiuses of these glass tubes um, uh, affect the sensitivity uh, of the, the three different things. So uh, I don't think it's a, a tilt out of a pinball machine. Um, although uh, sometimes I wonder the way I used to play. Um, but again, uh, I could strip one of those off and use it. I think I got all sorts in here. Uh, little uh, little push buttons, but I really think I've got to do something with uh, with that. I think that'd be a, a real joy. And all the health and safety freaks will be saying, oh, "It's mercury in the house." Um, used to play with this as a kid. Um, probably explains a lot. <laughs> I think that was the one I was thinking about when I looked at it. That's a little over center. Get close. Bit aggressive needs uh, a lot of uh, of effort. I think. Uh, Pretty Mercury wins, but how do I incorporate that? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, we're on switches. What about that one? Just out of interest, I thought I'd show you this. Um, this is uh, about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 of an ohm. Um, which is uh, fine, um, but what I probably would do is uh, use a transistor so this mercury switch would operate the base of a transistor and then it, uh, it wouldn't matter if, uh, if it was a high resistance uh, switch or not. And I'd have probably put a transistor on it anyway, um, but uh, I just thought uh, I'd just double check and make sure it's not too high a resistance. Oh, look at this, it's, it's a real shame, but I can tell from just a very quick look that I won't be able to use this switch uh, because of the hysteresis. And um, if you don't know what I mean by hysteresis, the hysteresis is the difference between uh, when the switch is open and when it's closed. Let me show you. There, the, the switch is just open there. When you watch, it's open there and then it's got to go down to there to close it again. So if you look at that angular gap, that's open circuit, closed circuit. I'm actually going to lift the back up. So that's quite a big difference. And uh, to get that amount of movement on the hips total, um, I'd have to change everything significantly. Compare that with this switch and that's closed, open, closed, open. Don't know if, you, if the camera's catching this properly. Closed, open, closed, open. So very, very little movement and that's what you want of course, or what I want. Um, and again compare that with this closed open closed open it's a real shame <laughs>